Hampton Court Castle's estate was formed in the early 1400s by the merging of two manors, Hampton Richard and Hampton Mappina. This was granted by Henry VI to Sir Roland Lenthal on his marriage to Margaret Fitzalan, a cousin to the King and daughter of Richard, the fourth Earl of Arundel. Roland's grandson, George Capel Coningsby, went on to sell the court in 1810 to Richard Arkwright, the celebrated inventor, mill owner and mechaniser during the Industrial Revolution. The family were to hold the castle until 1912 when it was sold to Nancy Burrell who used it as a war hospital during World War I. Over the years the estate fell into a poor state until an American businessman, Robert von Kampen, bought it in 1994. Von Kampen was to spend lavishly on the castle until his death in 1999. His family maintained the property, but went on to sell it in 2019 to a private limited company who now run the estate for holiday accommodation and events. The glorious gardens at Hampton Court are open from spring to autumn each year for visitors. There's a lot to see. Deep borders, a river walk, a thousand yew tree maze, and ornamental gardens. The Dutch garden was our favourite, with stunning architectural water features. Leaving the formal gardens, the wisteria arch had an intoxicating perfume before we emerged into the daylight to spy a mysterious door in a wizened tree. The entrance to the castle for modern day visitors is through the orange tree a stunning conservatory built in 1846 by Sir Joseph Paxton. Paxton also designed the hot houses at Chatsworth House before his masterpiece of the Crystal Palace for the Great Exhibition in 1851 in London. Having paid for our entry, we slowly walk through the conservatory to the first room. After being greeted by a member of staff who explains the layout of the castle, we receive another offer of assistance. Walking out of the conservatory and through the green room, we arrive in Ruck Hall. Although this formidable room looks as if it hasn't been touched for hundreds of years, it was remodelled in the 1990s and an upper floor removed to form a convincing gallery. Despite the formal and cheerful decoration, there seemed an odd atmosphere in this room. Not unwelcoming, just slightly unsettling. The gentleman who speaks may provide an answer why. His presence to those who live here may affect them. The cloisters at Hampton Court have been a feature of the house for 600 years. The spectacular armoury and intimidating weaponry consist of a mixture of genuine and reproduction pieces that I failed to tell apart. I wasn't surprised to hear mention of Henry, especially at such a prestigious location, but who is Percy? Could it be in reference to Henry Percy, who is rumoured to have had an illicit relationship with Anne Boleyn? <laughs> Discussing the histories of Hampton Court Palace and Hampton Court Castle is a rather amusing EVP spoken by two gentlemen. The accent is notable because it sounds nothing as we might expect for a historic era, and it's not reflective of the local inflection. In common with the previous voice, they sound more reminiscent of men from the southeast of England. That time, it was Protestant dissolution, wasn't it? Because it was after the dissolution of the monasteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking back towards the door you've just come out of, you can see two arches embedded in the stonework of the wall. These were originally windows of the medieval Great Hall that was deconstructed in the 1830s by Arkwright. 
We both loved this area. The roses planted against the wall of the courtyard had a beautiful, heady scent. It's funny how those communicate with us, demonstrate their sentience, and don't necessarily have any connection with the location we're visiting. The speaker, who I have no identity or knowledge of, correctly names my birthplace. Unless, of course, it's Percival Thorne, the shade of an elderly gentleman I grew up with. The Great Tower is one of the oldest parts of the castle that dates to the 1400s. This part of Hampton Court was built by Sir Roland Lenthal, a knight who fought at the Battle of Agincourt. It's the conundrum of capturing EVP that we can never truly understand. Though contextual to our surroundings, does the speaker mean his presence is required where we are, or at Hampton Court Palace? I'd like to be in here at night, actually. I want Hampton Court. The Coningsby family owned the castle from 1510 to 1810. It's their coat of arms that sits over the grand fireplace. The room as you see it today was fashioned by Arkwright as part of his renovations. The castle guide advises the armoury in this room as being largely Indian. The spike ball was hung at the entrance of a property to deter invaders on elephants. I don't pretend to have any knowledge of weaponry, medieval or otherwise. I was simply reading the description from the guidebook of the room that we were in. Again, it's hard to place the accent, but it's definitely not local to the court in Herefordshire. Is the weaponry in here is largely Indian. This is one of the larger rooms, and whilst the door was open and the room was cool, the dramatic change in temperature I felt was unusual, given that it was a mild day. The EVP isn't terribly easy to hear, but it is discernible, more so with earphones. I've got the shivers. I've gone freezing cold. Freezing, freezing cold. Like in a fridge cold. It is with it. <laughs> The private Catholic chapel was built in the early 15th century. Sadly, only a small amount of the original glass remains. The bolt was sold off in 1924 and lost to history. I was unable to find a description or information detailing the beautiful painted ceiling. It's certainly grand and a fine statement piece for the castle. The first voice captured here was recorded as soon as we arrived. It sounds much like a child's voice, but they aren't recognisable, even if they seem to know me. Ah, it's a chapel. Here I show my historical ignorance. Whilst I could find kings of Gaelic kingdoms from the 5th to 12th centuries, and high kings of Ireland from 846 to 1198, I found no mention of a queen of Ireland. Why they should mention this at Hampton Court is a mystery. I do have familial links to Ireland, but nothing regal to note. With a fine stone staircase featuring weaponry that was used at the Battle of Waterloo, the Gothic Hall is an impressive and intimidating room to linger in. The two gentlemen I've captured here are wonderful. Their conversation highlights their sentient nature and full awareness of my presence and ability to be heard on their side of life. <laughs> In 
contrast to the more traditional medieval appearance of the castle, is Arkwright's drawing room. Its highly decorative 19th century plasterwork and ceiling sets the scene perfectly for the events they now host. Whether this is the voice of Mr Arkwright in his own room, or an opportunist dropping in, I honestly don't know, but it's always nice to be acknowledged. Oh, here you go, Mr Arkwright. The second clip captured in this room is tonally unusual. It sounds as if the speakers are in an echo chamber. It's tempting to assume that they are talking to me, as there's a reference of hearing their voice, but I wasn't crying. Had they possibly seen me in another time, come forward at a later date. The heavy double doors ensure those who sat in the library had privacy and quiet. The huge Victorian bookshelves have a wide range of classical reads and a false door disguised as a bookcase. The EVP captured in this room is yet another example which is contextually relevant, yet puzzling too. The first voice gives our location. The second voice asks who, not where, as I try to fit many times. EVP phenomena isn't logical, and as much as we'd like communicators to always provide clear and direct speech, we have no control over their dialogue, and we're still without a full understanding of the mechanics involved in the recording of the voices. Not only had Hampton Court Castle been on our visit list for a very long time, we knew that it was important that we should record here. And whilst there weren't a huge amount of EVP captured, those who came forward to speak have been nothing but encouraging. This final clip is a very welcome message from a gentleman. Doing what we do is always a pleasure when we receive such lovely replies from our friends unseen. He wanted us to come here for a very long time. Thank <laughs> you.